China's nuclear weapons are garbage, but dangerous. China hides all information about its nuclear weapons. They do often have these knockoff Soviet style military parades where they will show off their ICBM launchers and nuclear capable missiles and that type of thing. But they keep it a deep and dark secret as to the type and how many nuclear warheads they have. And there's a good reason why they keep this secret, as we'll find out in this video. Before we talk about hydrogen bombs, let's talk about China's hydrogen powered tractors. Now stick with me, this is important. China's state media, CGTN, is THE mouthpiece of the Communist Party of China. It is directly controlled by the CCP themselves. So when CGTN's tech show puts out a video about China's amazing new hydrogen-powered smart tractors, this is what the government wants you to see. A tractor driven by hydrogen fuel cells, and that is autonomous. Here we see CGTN state reporter Zhou Yiqiu. Now she tells us about how amazing this new technology is, in a bid to showcase China's fantastic technological leaps forward. We're shown proof of it working, and even a technical computer-generated breakdown of the tractor. But guess what? It's all bullshit. Yes, you heard me. Complete and utter Bullshit. One of our subscribers who actually works in 3D animation found these assets online as part of a $7 asset pack and was able to recreate this fake tractor. In fact, he created a fake hydrogen powered cow. This whole tractor design is just a fake. China's hydrogen powered tractor is a fake pile of nonsense that doesn't do anything other than ensure investment money pours in and is wasted on corruption. They threw together these pathetic prototypes that can't even plow in a straight line, and the fake 3D computer schematics so that the rest of the world would look at it and say, wow, China really is advanced and cutting edge. So what does this have to do with nuclear weapons, you might ask? Simple. Just like with the fake tractor, the Chinese government always overstates its capabilities, especially militarily. Deterrence through faking it is the strategy. In fact, one could say that the Chinese government is just like one of those caterpillars that pretend to be a snake to scare off predators. The idea is to look dangerous, capable and fierce in order to hide your weakness and scare your enemy away. And yes, I did just compare the Chinese government to a caterpillar that mimics a snake. Let's move on. The thing is, the international community both underestimates and sharply overestimates China's military capabilities. About a year ago, intelligence communities around the world were in shock as it was observed that China was kicking its nuclear weapons manufacturer into overdrive building hundreds of new silos under cover of secrecy, inflating huge domes over their construction sites in order to conceal what they were building underneath from satellites. This really shocked the international community, and there was a slew of panic reporting about China's growing nuclear threat. Now, of course, it is alarming that China decided to focus on building up its nuclear arsenal. But one has to keep in mind that it's because China had a piss poor collection of nuclear warheads to begin with. Even now, experts estimate that China's nuclear warhead stockpile is probably around 400. And that's compared to the USA's five and a half thousand odd warheads. China's nuclear weapons program is also a ridiculous circus, born out of envy and insecurity. China begged the Soviets to give them atomic weapons, and Soviet scientists did begrudgingly teach China how to search for uranium in Xinjiang and how to build nuclear weapons, but at the last minute pulled out, realizing that it probably wasn't the best idea to have a ridiculous, murdering dictator of a neighbor armed with nuclear weapons. This led to Crazy Mao's paranoid scramble to become a nuclear power. He built this underground city beneath the streets of Beijing because he feared a nuclear attack from the Soviets, because now, instead of sucking up to the Soviets, who he greatly admired in the past, he was now treating them as an enemy, 
and some sort of a traitor to communism because of the way the Soviet Union was going. Anyway, China did eventually catch up using what the Soviets had taught them. Using what the Soviet scientists had left behind, they figured out how to make the nuclear bomb in the most ridiculous dog and pony show you've ever seen. The Chinese nuclear weapons program was more about praising Mao Zedong. Chairman Mao has taught us that when the enemy sharpens his sword, he must sharpen our sword. Preparations for our nation's first nuclear test are intensely underway. Mao Zedong's thoughts guide us in all our work. Our great teacher, great leader, great commander, and great helmsman, Chairman Mao, the great leadership of Chairman Mao, the comrades raise high the great red flag of Mao Zedong's ideology. Creatively study and apply Chairman Mao's work. Chairman Mao said, Fighters armed with Mao Zedong's thought are not deterred by any difficulty. The great red flag of Mao Zedong's thought creatively studied and used Chairman Mao's works. This is a gigantic success of Mao Zedong's thought. Long live the Chinese Communist Party. Long live Chairman Mao. But you know what? They did finally become a nuclear power and it was celebrated across the entire of China. And although Mao Zedong had called nuclear weapons a paper tiger in the past, saying on numerous occasions that he didn't care about nuclear war because China's population was so big that even if half of all Chinese people were killed in a nuclear war, there would still be enough left over for them to keep fighting. He very much did not care about killing his own people, that disgusting man. Anyway, China became a nuclear power. But the tests that they ran during their nuclear tests were absolutely ridiculous and must have resulted in untold needless deaths as they were doing all sorts of irresponsible, pointless tests such as growing food in irradiated soil from the test sites to prove that nuclear power wasn't as dangerous as the Soviets warned and subjecting random animals to the blasts and radiation just to say that everything is okay because the chickens at the test sites laid eggs. Go glory to Mao. That kind of nonsense. These chickens even laid eggs after the nuclear explosion. Anyway, I think you may get to where I'm going with this. By keeping a tight lid on the amount of nuclear warheads they have, China keeps the rest of the world on edge. After all, nuclear weapons are the most terrible and destructive man-made weapon and a force that threatens incredible devastation. Even a poorly armed and badly trained nuclear power is still to be treated as a serious threat. Speaking of poorly armed and badly trained nuclear powers, North Korea actually gets all of its missile launch vehicles from China because China sells it to them as logging vehicles, which they then retrofit and turn into uh, launch platforms. Yeah, I'm pretty sure China knows what it's doing when it sells these things to North Korea, their little brother. The thing is that with China, we have to realistically see what they're doing and stop falling for their relentless facades and boastful self-aggrandizing. My point here is that the world needs to wake up and stop miscalculating China. China's military is absolutely far, far worse than you may think, especially after seeing all of their fancy propaganda and parades. It's corrupt and lacks any real-world experience, and compared to most modern militaries in the world, really is a joke. But this joke is getting serious, and we need all eyes in the world to start keeping a close watch. China is a rising threat with an ever-expanding military, with ever-expanding colonial and expansionistic ambitions. You may not think that China wants war with your country, but China absolutely is at war with your country. It may not be a kinetic war, but China is conducting cyber, economic, cultural, legal, and full-spectrum war against you and your country. It's time to start treating the Chinese government for what they are, and that is an aggressor. Oh, Stealing technology, undermining our educational systems, taking advantage of our systems, meddling in politics, in entertainment, and in our way of life. 
stay vigilant, and stay awesome. They cheer fervently because the nuclear weapons in the hands of the Chinese people are ones to be used for inspiring the revolutionary people in the world to struggle against the United States. This is a victory of Mao Zedong's thought.